Hello, thank you for joining me. We're at Chester today now. I've just arrived on this Virgin Voyager. It was pretty overcrowded because there appears to be racing on. Um, I won't get into a rant about how the trains are too short, but they're not really long enough for the amount of people that were on it this morning. A um, couple of things I want to show you. Like these old station lights, you don't see that many of them. There's some still at Stratford upon Avon, but um, they're disappearing. There were some at Nottingham a few years ago. Not sure if they're still there. When we haven't, we will be doing the Mersey Rail later, but we haven't come to do a barrierless Mersey Rail like we did with the barrierless tube stations. But if you count Chester as a Mersey Rail station, because it is served by the Mersey Rail, then you have to go through a ticket barrier to get to all platforms except the one we're on now. And what I wanted to show you on this platform, while it's here, is this class 156. 156, 461. Because for our Miniature Railway Britain series, it has something relevant, although it's not miniature, it's full size. It has an advert for the Ravenglass and Estelle Railway now. Although it might be possibly next year we get to do that, it might happen this year, but I somehow don't think so. It's quite nice to see the Ravenglass and Estelle Railway can be seen all over the Northern Network by the vinyls on this unit. And they're not, they're, they're nicely done vinyls, they're not intrusive, they don't block the window. So, um, yeah, Ravenglass and Estelle at Chester. And just so you can see, there's your usual glass wall you get when you have ticket barriers. And we're here, the main ticket barriers are there. As I said, it's very busy over there because there's races on at Chester. Plan now is to go and see if the Groves and Apart Miniature Railway is running today. So I'm walking from Chester Railway Station to Groves and Apart. Now this isn't necessarily the most direct way to walk, I just thought this way is a bit more interesting. So I'm coming along the canal, the Shropshire Mainline Canal. If you have a look over there, you can see there's um, various houses, some new, some not so new. Behind me is the steam mill, which I think is a fascinating large building. Up ahead is a water tower. There's flats on this side. The place I'm heading for though is Waitrose. I'm going to grab a coffee before I go on the miniature railway. And um, I, I like how it's probably one of few Waitrose in the UK that you, ac you can actually directly access by barge. In fact, I think you, if you own a barge, you can get a barge closer to the front door and you can get your car to the front door, which um, is quite an amusing fact. Um, I'm pretty sure that is unique. They should have a McDonald's here and have, you know, like you get drive through McDonald's, they can have like a, um, what would it be, a sale through McDonald's, I suppose. That'd be quite funny. So, just coming here, there's a lot of new construction going on. There's going to be a you know, let's watch birds, it's interesting. And there is, I've always been fascinated by that tower. The views from the top of the tower must be amazing. You can see how they've demolished various buildings around it, but they've kept the tower. And we're sort of in amongst all the new construction of new apartments both sides of the canals. And uh, here we are, Waitrose. So, um, next part of the video, we shall be at Groveson Park. Just to let you see the views both sides. I'm now going into Waitrose, get a coffee and some lunch. So I've got my Waitrose coffee and now I'm going down the Travelator. Believe it or not, I think there are some people out there that actually go try and do every Travelator. There is. I'm not one of those people. But I'm using it as part of my transport to get to a miniature railway, so that's certainly unique. Um, I said we'll, be, we'll get to some by metro, some by tram, some by trains, some in my larder, but never before have I used a travelator to get myself to a miniature railway. So uh, just thought I'd show that. So I'm now going to go out the front of Waitrose and onto the main road, cross the road, and go and find Groves of Park where the miniature railway is. So coming out of Waitrose, there's a big tower we saw, there's Waitrose behind me. I've got to get across there so off I go to Groves Park. So we've now got across the busy road and we are 
about to enter Grosvenor Park. So we are very close now to the Miniature Railway. It's literally just at the end of this path. So let's see if it's running. By the way, if um, you're ever in Chester, do come and visit Grosvenor Park. It's a really nice park. It's got lovely views over the River Dee. I'm sure we can have a quick look at them. There's also a ruined church at one end. It's just outside the historic walls of the city centre. I'm not doing the city centre today. I've got other plans after here. We get to signs. It says they are a miniature railway this way, so let's go and find it. I know we have been here before, so I know we're not far away. It should be just around this corner. Let's see what we can find. There we go. See a little crossing. And there's the, the train. Oh, the train. I'm sure that's the loco I had at the Brookside Miniature Railway. Um, I'll just have to find out. We're going to go in. Anyway, I'm going to go and um, jump on and have a ride. So there goes the train, and I missed that departure, but what we'll do, as soon as we're here, we'll just have a quick look at the station, and then what we'll do, we'll run over to the other side of the park, see the train come in. So we've got a lovely little station. There's like an isolated bit of track here. Um, across here, we don't think level crossing. There's like a bit of track that goes just to be on the engine shed. Now I think that might be, perhaps they, you know, let children drive their own train um, on a safe little bit of track, not connected to the main line, so to speak. So that's the station building, that's the engine shed. So if we go over here, the railway goes over quite a cool long bridge over there. We should see the train in a minute. So it's quite a short miniature railway, but it's pleasant. I can certainly hear the train. Let's see, where is it? There we I can just see it. So I'll stop talking, let you watch the train goodbye. Time for my trip now. Quite excited about this. Thank you. 
Well, I'm on the Miniature Railway, and I'm filming the Miniature Railway at the same time. And um, I'm really enjoying the ride. Impressive structure that bridge for a miniature railway. Always like it when you know they, they do something, either have a tunnel or don't quite follow the natural contours of the land. It just, just makes the ride that much different, and that's what makes miniature railways also unique. And I think that's why I enjoy miniature railways so much. And I enjoyed this one so much, I decided to have a second ride. I guess the train is just sort of following it around. What I as at the beginning of the video I said I would um, show you the view over the River Dee, we're going to go and do that and then I'm going to go and um, go back to Chester Station and get on the train and go somewhere else. I say somewhere else, I mean, I've got this ticket here. It's a Cheshire Day Ranger. So, I'm going to go and bash the hell out of the Mersey Rail system and enjoy its units, the 507s and 508s, while I still can, because soon they're going to be replaced by these new Stadler trains, which I think look quite cool, but, um, you know, I want to enjoy these ones. I'm not going to try and go on everyone, but at least see every one of them while I still can, so let's just go and um, finish Groveston Park with the view over the River Dee, which is about to open out in front of us. video started at Chester Railway Station so I thought I'd end it at Chester Railway Station. We're just on the footbridge and we're just going down to the platform because there's something else I wanted to show you. We're just going down this, I always find this set of steps really strange how you've kind of got like the girders growing out of the roof. It um, just feels a bit, a bit different but I quite like it. Anyway that isn't actually what I wanted to show you. Um, it is just up here. So we come down here, this is this platform, you'll notice has a third rail, that's for the Mersey rail trains, which I'm going to get, because as I've already mentioned, I have a Cheshire Day Ranger which covers the railways of the Wirral, so I'm going to go and um, do some track bashing now. But the thing I wanted to show you up here, which I always find quite an interesting story, is most of the station has an overall roof, but it ends here and it starts again there. And you may wonder why it does that. Well, it hasn't always been like this. The roof once carried on, but at some point the DMU derailed and it demolished the centre ports and the roof collapsed. So that is why there is this section here with no overall roof. 
where these two 150s are. Got a Northern 150 without a door in the front and a Reva Trains Wales, although they're not called that anymore, Transport for Wales 150 with a door in the front. So, from Chester Railway Station, hope you enjoyed my little trip to Grosvenor Park. I'm going to go and bash the hell out of the railways on the Wirral. Goodbye.